Welcome. My name is David Gardner and I'm a professor of turf grass science at The Ohio State University. We're going to talk a little bit about some alternative ways that plants might take up nutrients that they need for growth and development. With golf course management practices, as the height of cut of bent grass and Bermuda grass decreased and the management intensity of those grasses increased, one of the things that came into popularity in the last 10 to 15 years or so was the concept of spoon feeding. What spoon feeding is, it's a practice that's usually used on high sand soils like our putting greens. And what this is, is it's a light application of nitrogen applied on a much more frequent basis. So whereas with a normal fertility management program on high cut Kentucky bluegrass, where you might apply a pound of nitrogen per thousand square feet perhaps four times a year. With spoon feeding, what you're doing is you're applying much lower rates of nitrogen much more frequently. Now, there's a couple of reasons that superintendents do this. One, the depth of the root system is a lot shorter than what we see on higher cut turf. And when we discussed the way that plants take those nutrients up via root interception. The roots, since they're not as deep on putting greens, you have to apply the nutrients more frequently because depending on the nutrient, you'll have leaching of the nutrient past the root profile much more rapidly than would occur on a higher cut turf. Also, spoon feeding came into vogue primarily as a way that superintendents could attempt to starve out annual bluegrass, the common weedy invader of creeping bentgrass putting greens. And so spoon feeding was used as a mechanism to attempt to starve out the annual bluegrass, which has an even more diminutive root system than bentgrass when it's maintained at putting green height. Spoon feeding has been in practice for quite a long time. The thing about spoon feeding, though, is, is that it tends to be used interchangeably with two other terms, liquid feeding and foliar feeding. And there is a lot of confusion about what exactly each of those terms mean. See, spoon feeding merely refers to the light and more frequent application of nutrients. Because of the light application rates, usually applying these via a granular is not practical. And so it's much more common with a spoon feeding program to apply these materials as a liquid feed. That is, you have the fertilizer dissolved or suspended in a liquid solution and sprayed onto the turf rather than applied as a granular. With a liquid feed program, the uptake may be via the roots or depending on the element that you're using, it may be via the shoots. One of the other things that comes into play with a golf course management scenario, like in this illustration here, is that during stressful periods, primarily in the summertime, you'll have such a decrease in the available root mass that it becomes difficult for the plant to take nutrients up conventionally out of the soil because there has been such a loss of root mass. And so the idea then is proposed that if we can get the plant to take the nutrients up, not through the roots, but through the leaves, in other words, true foliar feeding, that this would be a novel way that you could get the turf, the nutrients that it needs during stressful periods of the summer. With foliar feeding, the liquid fertilizer actually enters the plant through the shoots. This is different than liquid feed in which you would have the fertilizer dissolved in liquid applied to the turf, but then you would still have the fertilizer wash past the plant profile into the soil and the nutrients taken up by the roots. With foliar feeding, you are talking about the fertilizer elements being physically absorbed by the plant shoot tissue. And this is an alternative, like I said, potentially to soil applied fertilizer when the plant roots, for whatever reason, primarily a stress, can't absorb its required nutrients. Not all nutrients that we deal with in turf management are applied via foliar feeding. In this graphic here, you see the same list of the essential elements that are necessary for turf management, but I've highlighted those elements that are used primarily in a foliar feeding program. Those include nitrogen, 
potassium, sulfur, boron, copper, iron, manganese, and zinc. Now, why these elements and not the ones that aren't highlighted? If you remember from the previous session, and I talked about cation exchange capacity and how the plant has negatively charged roots that attract the positive cations, well, it's a similar thing with the shoots. The way that the shoot tissue is constructed is such that there tends to be a negative charge. And so when you apply negatively charged materials to that plant tissue, instead of getting absorption, the materials are actually going to be partially repelled and you're not going to have as efficient an uptake of negatively charged anions as you would the positively charged cations. And so things like phosphorus, since it's taken up primarily as an anion H2PO4 with a negative charge, you're not going to see as efficient an uptake by the plant foliage as you would with a cation such as nitrogen in the form of ammonia or potassium in the form of its univalent cation, just K+. Some of these elements that aren't applied as a foliar like calcium and magnesium tend to be available in the soil in large enough concentrations and they're not used by the plant in amounts that make it all that much of a management concern for us. And some of the micronutrients that aren't applied as a foliar such as molybdenum and nickel Really, when is the last time that you heard a superintendent talk about their molybdenum fertility program? The point that I'm trying to make here is that most of the elements that we deal with in turf management that are important to the superintendent or the turf manager are elements that we're you know, dealing with primarily in our granular uh, fertilizer programs anyway. Some of the disadvantages of foliar feeding are the inability to supply a large amount of nitrogen phosphorus and potassium without causing foliar burn. Remember, most of these materials are salts and when you apply a salt suspended on a large volume of water and you put that directly on the foliage, it's kind of like taking a big gob of salt, you know, like a tablespoon and putting it into your mouth and letting it sit there. You know how moisture begins to get pulled out of your tongue and your soft palate tissues. It's a similar phenomenon when you apply these materials to plant tissue where you have actual extraction of water out of the plant tissue if you apply the nutrient solution in too high of a concentration. So when you're foliar feeding, you have to supply the nutrients in a dilute enough solution that you're not going to cause foliar burn. Similarly, when you apply a granular formulation of a fertilizer, if you look at the package directions, it typically tells you to wash in that fertilizer application after you've, after you've applied the fertilizer and the reason for that is is that you want to get those salts off of the foliage and washed into the soil before you cause any foliar burn. Since in this case we're attempting to put the nutrients directly into the leaf, they have to be dilute enough so that we don't cause that burn. What this means then is that you're going to use several applications at lower rates in order to maintain growth. In certain management situations that's going to be impractical, such as a residential lawn environment where you would go from four applications per year with a granular up to four applications potentially a month as a liquid, that might be impractical. However, in a golf course management situation where superintendents are already spoon feeding, they're already going out every seven to 14 days and making a light application of fertilizer elements then foliar feeding is a much more practical proposition. It's very important to recognize and understand that not all liquid fertilizers are capable of foliar absorption. As a general rule, if you have a clear solution, that is when you hold it up and you can see light through it, that solution contains water-soluble fertilizers in a true solution and that is much more likely to be able to be absorbed by the plant foliage. If you have a cloudy solution, that's going to contain water insoluble fertilizers that are held in suspension. Usually on the package it says that you must maintain the agitation in the tank in order to, uh, you know, during the application in order to prevent settling of the solution out of suspension. And so there's a variety of 
liquid fertilizers that are on the market that aren't water soluble products but they're actually water insoluble products that are held in suspension not in solution that after application usually these are slower release compounds that you know have an extended window of, of release but those materials since they're not water soluble and usually require some kind of microbial activity in order to degrade the initial compound and release uh, materials for uptake by the plant, those liquid fertilizers would not be capable of absorption by the plant leaf. So clear solutions that contain a, a true solution of the fertilizer elements that I had mentioned before, nitrogen in the form of ammonium, potassium, iron, and some others, iron's usually in a chelate. One of the other general rules of foliar fertilizers is that these have to be small mineral particles that are taken up. But from what we know, small mineral particles can be taken up by the plant leaf. However, larger molecules cannot be taken up. So it's very important that the fertilizer material that is being applied is available to the plant as a small particle and not as a large macromolecule. Also, positively charged particles are more likely to be taken up. In other words, ammonium, potassium, magnesium, if you're using it. Since they have a positive charge, they're more likely to be attracted to the negatively charged leaf surface. Negatively charged particles, on the other hand, such as nitrate, phosphate, and sulfate, tend to be repelled, and their uptake by the foliage is going to be less efficient.